The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Greetings, children of the night. We return once more with some delightful Halloween treats in our goodie bag. This time, we're taking a look at a Hollow's Eve theme special from the beloved web series Crypt TV. Yes, it seems that this underrated horror channel made quite the large number of holiday specials during their tenure, where naturally, Halloween received an abundance of horror features, and we plan to look at a fan-favorite episode of their hit series to celebrate this month for ourselves. I myself have been gaining an increased interest in this quaint little horror channel, since plenty of their new flavors pack a unique taste. But it has had a few disappointments from time to time. Not a lot, but some. However, a couple of these shorts definitely have impressive accomplishments too, and would truly make for some decent horror movies. Unlike most of Crypt TV shorts, this one actually had a behind-the-scenes feature showing us all the hard work that went into the creation of this unique horror story, making it out as a huge work of terror that the studio had such high hopes for. I do appreciate entertainers giving a small project their all, but we'll still have to see if all their huge endeavors were indeed successful in the end, much like all this show's other great stories. On an interesting trivial note, this short story was honestly much longer on the channel's original version, and for some reason, it had to be shortened down by the creators into a much simpler video. Luckily, I was able to get my paws on the uncut version, so I have the full story and I shall be analyzing it in the form it was meant to be seen as, in all its uncensored glory. Were any changes to this short story even necessary? I guess I'll have to check out for myself. So, was this holiday short one of the smash hits, or does it fail to amaze? Well, let's stop wasting time and find out. You better rethink carving out your jack-o'-lanterns this October, because nature has found a way to fight back. What do I mean by that? Guess you'll have to see for yourself. This is my review on the Crypt TV Halloween tale, Jack Attack. So, our episode opens up on Hollow's Eve afternoon, in a peaceful little neighborhood, where we meet our main characters. A sassy college-aged babysitter named Elizabeth, and an annoying, curious little brat named Jack. Get it? His name sounds like the title! It's a clever little misdirection! However, both these main characters instantly make a bad first impression on the uncut version, making me realize why this introduction was deleted completely on the re-uploaded version. The channel swapped out. This babysitter, who is supposed to watch over this innocent, naive little kid while his parents are away, actually nonchalantly cusses in front of him and does nothing when he proudly repeats her swears in public. This was just the opening scene, and already the writers made both these two characters really annoying. I mean, could you imagine anyone being more obnoxious than these morons? T fucking 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 Island swears from the interweb! Fucking 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 Pinky, stop it. Swearing is a bad habit. Don't you want to be classy? You're right, kitty cat. I'll change from now on. For you. <sighs> so, 
though, back in the plot, Elizabeth and Jack bought some pumpkins to make jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween night, before they plan to head out for some trick-or-treating later in the day. They carve up the pumpkins and exchange some exposition, but here's where we get to another minor issue I had. The third character. The... Stupid dog! Holy cow, this dumb dog was super annoying. All this dog does, all it does is bark and 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 bark even louder. It's so distracting, to the point where I had to re-record this short story multiple times because the dumb dog's barking was louder than the actual character dialogue and big horror scares. Dogs barking ominously at all the supernatural horrors and scary stories loses that fear factor when it never shuts up. Why do people insist on having stupid pets in their horror tales when they do nothing interesting? Screw this mutt, he should have been removed from the plot as a whole, and it would have made the horror story all the more tolerable. Not to mention this... Stupid dog! ...does nothing throughout this whole story, rendering the dog entirely pointless. In short, I think the Yappy Dog might be the worst character in this webisode. But enough about the... Stupid Dog! What are the real main characters like? Well, they are pretty normal, bland characters, but the story really plays up their naive unsuspectingness that nothing bad will ever happen this Halloween night. No siree, Bob, nothing dark or grim will ever happen to them tonight, to the point where everyone can guess that, yep, they're totally doomed. It's almost like waving a death flagship over here. Elizabeth teaches Jack about the traditions of jack-o'-lanterns, how they've always been a cool holiday activity for the kids, how easy it is to gut them open like fish, and how they are so spooky! Ooh! But then, Jack asks her if pumpkins can feel pain, where she responds how they don't feel it at all. Yep, she strongly informs the boy that pumpkins are totally not living beings like us, and have zero reactions to pain or death. Which, I'm sure, won't mean anything at all to this grim narrative. It's a good thing we know that pumpkins are never vengeful in horror stories, right? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna give you cross eyes like you might see in an idiot, a stupid triangle nose, and a big mouthful of the ugliest shaped teeth there are. Where? And I'm gonna make your friends watch. Ha, I recycle jokes from my old videos, because I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> However, while this oh-so-subtle foreshadowing is a nice touch to the story, it is really ruined by the true worst aspect of this short. Jack's acting. This kid is by far one of the worst child actors I have ever seen on this web show. Like that lobster my dad threw in the boiling water that time. It's like when my mom and dad sent me to acting school and the lessons didn't stick. <laughs> oh. I'm acting. Good lord, this kid is so bad. Really, 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 really bad. He's so bad that he made me burst out laughing every time I had to study this short horror flick because his line delivery is so flat and he never once sounds like a realistic, fun-loving kid enjoying Halloween. 
Some children are just not cut out for this acting business. And this is definitely a great example of why kids don't always make the greatest actors in serious, mature stories. And if you think I'm being too mean because he's just a kid, well, I did check out the behind-the-scenes content where the adults guided this child actor, and, well, the boy looks super disinterested whenever being on set. No, really, this kid was just so not into making this horror film that he came across like he wanted to go back home to play video games and not work on a fun horror story. Heck, even when the adults praised him, he still looks bored out of his mind. So yeah, the fatal flaws of this Crypt TV adventure included bad animal actors and bad child actors. Sorry, but no perfect score for you. Anyways, the duo successfully gut those helpless pumpkins as Elizabeth continues telling the kid how pumpkins are incapable of feelings where we get this intense close-up shot of the babysitter even baking the poor pumpkin seeds. As silly as it is, this could really make a great anti-jack-o'-lanterns message, especially with the dark twists later. Perhaps Greenpeace can find a way to spread word on this pro-plant life tale. Later that night, the duo get ready for some Halloween hijinks, but we get a pretty pointless scene where Elizabeth gets a phone call from her off-screen boyfriend, where she rejects him visiting the house because apparently he cheated on her. Wow, that's real. Boring! Yeah, this is a totally unnecessary subplot that goes nowhere. No kitten, this plot point about Elizabeth having relationship problems is ultimately a waste of writing, because it never leads to anything more other than an extra side note that could have been skipped over entirely. I suppose this does give Elizabeth some character background, but the Crypt TV showrunners actually removed this part as well, because even they seem to have agreed that this was a pointless moment in the grand scheme of things. Not to mention, it made the story a bit confusing, since her subplot ultimately means nothing in the end. The first time I watched this, I honestly thought that this girl was Jack's mom. She seems like she could very easily be the mother of our kid's side character. Since she does a lot of actions that seem like she's related to this child, rather than a babysitter for the night. Interestingly enough, I found out that the Crypt TV writers did originally intend for this girl to be Jack's mother but they changed it at the last minute because they felt that Elizabeth's actress looked way too young to be an adult mother, so she was changed into the boy's babysitter instead. However, the website's official re-release of this horror story also edited out all the parts where it's pointed out that Elizabeth is just his babysitter. So if you have never watched the uncut version at all, then you still might make the mistake of assuming that she's his mother. It's just so pointless, and the showrunners don't even seem to fully agree on stuff behind the scenes, which kind of shows in their final results because they ended up altering the original Jack attack to avoid confusing the audience, which sadly failed. <coughs> Ironically, Crypt TV wanted to fix the narrative's issues, but they only made them kind of worse. Since so much is left unexplained, and it's so difficult for the viewers to get a read on things. 
A darn shame that Crypt TV lacked confidence in this one, because it was almost great. But let's reach the climax now. Jack then surprises his babysitter with his lame scarecrow costume, which she finds cute. Man, he should have gone with the Arkham version. Much creepier. The two of them soon eat some pumpkin seeds before heading out, but Jack starts choking on them. Elizabeth tries badly to help him out, but he seems as if he's being brutally strangled. What could it be? It's the pumpkins. No, I'm not joking. This is the big twist we were building up to, folks. The real monsters in this horror tale are the pumpkin seeds. Why? Well, you see, the pumpkins are sick and tired of the stupid humans oppressing them for so long and slaughtering thousands of their people. So they decided to strike back and kill everyone. The pumpkin uprising has begun and they'll start by murdering the idiots who burn their young because they demand... See, you were supposed to believe that the title Jack Attack meant that Jack would be evil and attack somebody, but instead, it's the Jack-O-Lanterns attacking the human Jack. What a clever subversion of our expectations. <laughs> um, yeah, this fake misdirection was done slightly better on some of Crypt TV's other shorts. So sadly, I don't think it was very good on this one. Next time, baby. So Jack starts suffocating to death, where Elizabeth desperately attempts to save the boy, but to no avail. So naturally, she does what all of us would do in order to save a choking child. She gets out a large knife and slices open his throat! Wait, what? For those of you who don't understand why the hell she would do such a stupid thing, there is a reason for this action. You see, Elizabeth is attempting to perform a medical procedure called tracheotomy, which is a process where a doctor cuts open a hole in the throat of somebody who is suffocating in order to give air for the patient to breathe. It's typically done as a last-ditch effort to save a choking victim so they won't die with a blockage in their windpipe. However, the problem is that the audience watching this internet video on YouTube is most likely not going to know that. So it makes the hero look like an incompetent moron who's doing more to kill the little boy rather than saving him. There is also no explanation as to how she knows this would help. It's never stated if Elizabeth knows some medical skills or not, if she's a nurse or something, or if she knows that this would work at all. And the fact that the average viewer gets no reasoning behind this only adds more fury thanks to the piss-poor writing. And number two, the fact that this is the first option Elizabeth chooses still makes her look so stupid. You know, if I had a dying little kid losing oxygen under my care, I'd probably call an ambulance so a real medic could save them. But hey, clearly slashing open a child's throat without having any medical expertise whatsoever should always be the A plan, right? This chick is a moron. Why didn't you call 911? So, without explaining to the casual viewer what she's even doing, the dummy cuts open the kid's throat, and we get the wacky horror scene that relies way too much on gross-out body horror. Where she yanks out a plant vine, leading to a baby pumpkin inside of Jack. Yep, the pumpkin seeds are growing out of the boy's body like chest bursters. He's dying from a baby pumpkin that's about to burst out of his chest. Pumpkin chest bursters. Pumpkin chest bursters. This is a comedy, no argument. 
The seeds they ate earlier were evidently still alive and have planned to kill them all by growing from within their bodies before readying to burst out and spread their vines to everything they can grasp onto. Seriously, that is so stupid that I need to play this out with the appropriate soundtracks. Looks like he'll need a pumpkin patch. But it's not over yet, because uh-oh, they all ate the pumpkin seeds, meaning that Elizabeth and the stupid dog will die too. was hilarious. So yay, all of them, including the stupid dog, are all dead, and the demonic pumpkin spawn spread their vines across everywhere, so they can, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course. But it's still not over yet. In the current version on Crypt TV, we just see the pumpkin plant spreading all over the place. But in the original's twist ending, we spot Elizabeth's ex-boyfriend coming over for a surprise visit so he can make up with his old girlfriend. But as he searches the quiet house, we see the plant vine spreading across the windows, meaning that he'll die next. And that's where it all concludes. And that, boys and girls, was the true story of how Poison Ivy ruined Halloween. Not even the Dark Knight could prevent a hundred nightmares that day. Alright, you tell me how all those pumpkins magically came to life and took over the world. Can't do it, huh? Well, then I'll say Poison Ivy did it. Nevertheless, that was the end to Crypt TV's Halloween Jamboree, Jack Attack. How does it hold up? Well, it was super meh. This is the most average and lazy horror story I've seen from them by far. I won't lie, I didn't get as invested in this short compared to the last few that were recommended to me. Now don't get me wrong, there is a lot to like about this horror story too. The gore effects were amazeballs. They all look superb and were very well executed. The makeup artists and technicians really showed off how excellent their horror effects were and really made me sick to my stomach. The idea of a pumpkin uprising is kind of silly, but not that much. Since R.L. Stein did do this exact same thing twice, which did work out and scared us a whole lot. I think killer pumpkins are actually a cool idea for a horror story, but it does need good writing to back it up. I think this writing could use some improvements, especially when it came towards the characters. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. 
but the plot overall is easy and simple enough to enjoy. However, there were some things that did drag down the score for me as well. Like I said before, the annoying animal acting was irritating, and the child actor was horrendously bad. The kid playing Jack cannot deliver a good performance, and it really says a lot when his best scene overall was the one he died in. On the plus side, Elizabeth's actress was very decent, and her death scene was much better compared to Jack's, since hers was not obscured by the darkness. The uncut version also did have a few weak plot elements. I can see why Crypt TV wanted to trim it down and purge all the useless stuff, like the idiot boyfriend and the opening introduction scene that only makes the main characters look horrible, but that does also kind of limit the story as well. Elizabeth is supposed to be a snarky babysitter with a heart of gold, but she can be easily mistaken for Jack's cynical mother. Her subplot did give her a character trait in the original cut, but by deleting it in the official version, it removes giving her a noteworthy characteristic. And worst of all, she looks like a total idiot in some scenes. She swears in front of a child, she pisses off the pumpkins, causing all this dark horror in the first place, and, oh yeah, her first brilliant idea to save a choking child was to slice open his throat with a knife and hope for the best instead of calling for help. Yeah, I did not get a good feel for her as a person, despite her actress's best efforts to give a good performance. Elizabeth is just not impressive or memorable. But the hugest reason why I am not giving this Tale of Suspense a gold medal is because of one very large weakness. All of the scary moments in this horror story rely on the gross, disgusting gore effects. Sorry folks, but using nauseating blood and guts as the primary scare in your horror flick is the laziest way to horrify your audience. Gross does not equal scary. The audience is supposed to be afraid of the death of likable main characters, not just afraid of the sick ways they can die in. Your horror story needs a few more layers if you want it to be remembered. While I think brutal death can add a level of darkness to a scary story, it should not be the sole reason to get invested in what's going on in it. The villains could be given some more backstory, or at least an understanding of their hatred, to make the viewers fear them even more. We could almost feel a sense of pity for the jack-o'-lanterns, since they lost their family, and them gaining an opportunity to fight back with magic powers could have been awesomer. Why not create the chance for them to evolve into fully grown pumpkin heads like on the RL? Stein shows. That would have been so cool if the show played out the pumpkins like the xenomorph aliens, since there's so much potential in it. Maybe if this short film achieved a full-length movie, then it could have been great. But for now, as its own short film, I think it's pretty average. The pumpkin uprising seems like a fun, disturbing idea, but thanks to the lack of knowledge regarding the antagonists, all it makes me think is... We need a little more concepts to make a solid film with a great story. However, there were good qualities in here too, trying to work against the negative ones. The practical effects were perfect, the gore was good, but shouldn't have been the trump card for the short's grand horror moments. The body horror has some disturbing visuals that do deliver, and the sets were very nicely done. Sadly though, the was annoying. There were some useless characters all around here. The kid playing Jack was worse than Megan Fox. There were some odd plot holes here and there, especially if you ask yourself, why is this the first time the pumpkins are rebelling against humankind? And the writing team needed some stronger twists and turns. Overall, I think this short had both positives that could have amounted to something fantastic, but also suffered from some negatives that cancelled out a few of the greater elements, which led to this Halloween adventure coming out as a very average nightmare experience. So I grant this Crypt TV holiday special a silver skull. I know a lot of people love this short, but I honestly thought it was pretty okay. 
Not too fantastic, but not the worst thing so far from this network. I hope the production team gets a movie from this to expand on the story, but tragically, it doesn't look like they will. Well, Wolfpack, we did it. We managed to go another October with psychotic, murderous pumpkin demons. Are you all happy? We kept the tradition alive. I hope this doesn't mean I'll get a million requests for the Pumpkinhead movie next year. Regardless, Jack Attack was an okay student film. That won't blow you away with its horror tricks, but it is a passable short story that definitely leaves you asking what's going on and can scar you for life thanks to the competent body horror. I don't really recommend it, but if you want good body horror tales again, then this might impress you. Jack Attack is an ambitious little seed that was planted well in the ground, but it has yet to grow into something beautiful thanks to some mismanaged tending. So at last we can- Ooh! 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 Cat! Cat! Can you let me say it? I want to close us out! Me! 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 me. Okay, Pinky, feel free to say it. Thanks! Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, or just tune in for more videos posted here on Wolf Entertainment. He's your host, Catastrophe, and I'm Pinky Die, and we'll see you all next time with even more ghoulish nightmares awaiting for you. Check it out, or I'll kill you! <laughs> Okay, you can reel it back a little. Oops, sorry! Subscribe!